the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Probably what's been dominating the news cycle the most, more than anything else in the course of the last months, has been the, the decision to uh, decide who's going to be the Republican nominee for president. And it's an ongoing debate that's been happening, and there's been a wide variety of debates that have happened where the candidates are presenting why they should be voted for and why you shouldn't vote for the other guy. And what's happening this year is what ha seems to happen every year, is that a lot of what the candidates say is accurate, but often it's mixed with certain inaccuracies. And this has been a problem in politics for really as long as there's been politics. People stand up, they say things that are true, and sometimes they twist the facts or downright lie. And what happened is that there's a group called the Annenberg Group for Public Policy, and they wanted to make sure that there would be some way that citizens would have of determining whether or not politicians were actually saying things that were true. It's a nonprofit, nonpartisan group. And so they started a website called factcheck.org. And you can go there after a debate, and it will say this politician said this or that thing is what they said accurate. And they do the research and they say that this was or this wasn't accurate. I haven't seen a single politician that doesn't have some inaccuracies in what they've said. But there is some group out there doing this research. It's kind of their ministry. And I encourage you to check it out, factcheck.org. It's a, it's a good website. But this um, misrepresentation of facts is something that's certainly not as, it's not something new to mankind. It's something that mankind has struggled with since time in memoriam. And it was a time, it was an issue at the time of the prophet Isaiah. And God spoke to the Jewish nation through the prophet Isaiah. And in today's reading, God says, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue mutters wickedness. No one enters suit justly, no one goes to law honestly. They rely on empty pleas, they speak lies, they conceive mischief, and they bring forth iniquity. Politicians, candidates, have a responsibility to speak the truth. So to people who are going to go into court and put their hand on the Bible to make a plea, have a responsibility to speak, to stand for the truth. And of course, candidates have to speak the truth when they're campaigning. We expect that of them. We want that of them. And when people go into court and they put their hand on the Bible and they swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, they have a responsibility to do that. But when that witness steps down from the witness stand, whether or not they continue to tell the truth, well, who knows? But as Christians, it is as if we are always under oath from Jesus Christ to tell the truth at all times. That's to be the rule for our lives as Christians, to be people who don't engage in deception, to be people that stand for the truth. Jesus says to his disciples, and through them to each of us, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, and in every part of the world. So we are to be the witnesses of Christ. The Armenian word for witness is agnades. The classical Armenian agen, the first part of that word, means a I, and des is to see. So literally, the Armenian word for witness means I witness. So what is it that we have I witnessed? Well, that's, where, uh, that's what we talked about in today's gospel. For God so loved the world that he, saved, that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We saw this incredible thing happen. The Armenian people embraced the vision that was brought to Armenia by Thaddeus, by Bartholomew, by St. Gregory, and this is an integral part of what it is to be Armenian. It's an integral part, of course, what it is to be Christian, that we have this belief, we have this witness, something's been revealed to us, and we want to go out and share this great news, this great thing that we have seen. This is our responsibility, to testify to this truth at all times, and to stand for truth, because Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. So to stand for the truth is to stand for Jesus. We are to stand for the truth in all that we do, never engaging in deception. And to have our lives be representative of the truth that's been revealed to us. Part of the truth that's been revealed to us is that we have a responsibility to help those who are poor, who are suffering, who are needy, those who have a, not only a physical hunger, but those who have a spiritual hunger as well. We have to provide for them. This is what Jesus did. He freed the captives, not just people who were captive in prison. We don't have any case of Jesus actually opening prison doors, but he, he released people who were captive in their souls. And so we have to participate in this work. And the closer we are to Christ, the more we can participate in this work, the more we can stand for 
this truth. So our lives need to be, in all that we do, a living witness to the gospel of Christ. That is to say, we need to demonstrate by all we say and do that we believe the, tr the truth that Christ revealed to us. We need to be people who stand for truth. And the church, too, is to be a beacon of truth in this dishonest world. This is our calling, personally and corporately, to be the light of truth in a world of darkness. And for this reason, we need to examine our lay ministries, as we will be doing, and, and strengthen our lay ministries so we can better be the beacon of light and truth that Christ calls us to be, not only by word, but by action as well. So too it should affect how we live our lives personally, how we relate to others, how we communicate with others, how we respond in our daily communications. The world, of course, suddenly teaches us that it's okay to be deceptive. In fact, it's wise to be deceptive. That's what the world tells us. And it tells us that in a wide variety of ways. For instance, if you don't feel like doing something, you don't feel like doing something, just say you're too busy. That's the wise thing to do. Just say you're too busy, because who's going to argue with that? No one knows what your schedule is, so just say you're too busy. Even if it's being deceptive, the world tells us that's a good thing to do. Make some time for yourself. If you're making a half-hearted attempt to accomplish a task, and someone says, what are you doing? You say, you know, I'm doing all I can. I'm doing all I can. To tell that, to believe that about ourselves, that we're doing all, our, all we can, as if we don't ever fall short. These are techniques that the world teaches us to use. I'm too busy to come to church every Sabbath. The world tells us, oh, well, of course you're busy. Of course, that's perfectly reasonable that you couldn't make it. You couldn't keep all the Sabbath. It's, it's okay for you to break the commandment of God. The world tells us it's okay to tell yourself that lie and to tell others that lie. When we move past worldly excuses and decide to answer the call of God, God fills us even greater with his spirit and he uses us to be greater examples of his light and his truth in this world. Sometimes people lie on job applications. They're even told, this is the wise thing to do. Enhance it a little, spice it up. Even though you did a very small thing, make it look very big. Deceive, lie, it's wise, it's wise. But as Christians, we are not to be this way. There was a, a college application that uh, a young woman was filling out, and there was a section on it that her parents were supposed to fill out. Her mom had to fill out a section. Her dad had to fill out a section. So the father was filling out the section, and it said at one point during the questionnaire, is your daughter a leader? And he said, he thought, you know, my daughter is a very studious young woman. She's very smart. She does excellent in school. She works very well with others, but she's always been kind of shy and uncomfortable in any kind of a leadership position. So he wrote, my daughter is not a leader, but she's an excellent follower. And he sent it in. They sent in the application. When they got it back, there was a separate little note in there from the dean to the father. And it said, you know, I received your application and we're, we're glad to accept your daughter to be in our college, to be part of our program. There are 500 incoming freshmen, and 499 of them were listed by their parents as leaders. So it's nice to have at least one follower. <laughs> so many don't want to speak the truth because they think it may make others feel uncomfortable. So for the sake of worldly comfort, they twist the truth. They lie. They cover it up. We are called to be those who stand for truth, even if it makes people sometimes feel a bit uncomfortable. So often, instead of speaking the truth with compassion, we can decide to lie instead, thinking that I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable, so I'll just change the truth. I'll just say something that isn't true is true. There's this woman who was doing some work in Armenia, and she was going to be leaving for home soon, and so she called her husband and she said, Sarkis, I'm coming home. How is everything? He said, oh, things are fine. Uh, he said, how's the cat? He said, oh, the cat, um, the cat died. <laughs> and she said, the, the cat died? He said, yeah, the, the cat died. So you just say it like that? He said, well, it's, it's dead. And she said, well, couldn't have you have said that um, 
I don't know, it's, it's on the roof or something. And then when I, when I got the plane to, to Moscow and I called you from there, you could have said it fell off and maybe it, it was injured. And then when I arrived in New York, I could say it was at the vet and the vet was taking care of it. And then when you picked me up in Chicago, you could say that unfortunately it didn't make it. You know, you could have kind of pushed him to blow. And he said, I'm, so, I'm sorry. He said, I'll, I'll be more careful next time. He said, okay. She said, by the way, how's the dog? There was a long pause, and he said, you know, the dog's on the roof. <laughs> Our calling is to speak the truth in love. Even the hard truth of the gospel, which is a truth that people have a hard time hearing, and we might be tempted to shy away from it for fear of making someone feel uncomfortable, but the reality is we are to be those who bring this light into the world with love and with compassion. Remember, we are created in the image and likeness of God, and even though the likeness of God has been to some extent damaged or covered up because of our sin, the image of God is still there. There's a sense of truth and justice within everyone, every culture, in every culture, all people have some sense of justice because we're stamped with that, some sense of truth because God put that stamp upon us. He gave us conscience. And so we are called to speak to that presence of God within people, to speak to that place where they are. They do have this connection with God. And so we're called to speak the words of Scripture, even if they are hard to hear, to speak the revelation we have received in love, even though it might be hard for people to face that truth. St. Paul said, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and matter, it marrow, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So the word of God is something that can be hard to hear, speaking the truth that we're called to speak, living in this true way that God calls us to live, can be difficult for people to face. And yet, we're called to do it nonetheless. When we deal with the truth head on, it will surgically remove falsities from our lives and will help others to face falsity in their own lives as well. Jesus said, know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If we want to be free, and if we want others to be free, we need to lovingly speak the truth that God has revealed to us. As Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ, we must place honesty at the highest place in our lives, understanding this is to be the rule of our life. Is your life a testimony to truth? Is your life a testimony to the truth of the gospel of Christ? I want to encourage you to resolve all you, to do all you can to both in word and in deed make your life a living witness that Jesus is the way, 